Well hello there people, quite often in the evening I like to go outside and have a bit of a foraging session, it's a great time of year to do that because there's so many fruits available, I think it's a great thing. So, we're just going to have a, a walk around and have a chat about a few things and uh, just generally share some thoughts. So, here goes. Right, okay, so, many of you may be aware that uh, I'm growing two varieties of runner beans this year. Moonlight, I believe that is the name of the variety, and that's a white flowering variety, and Butler, which is a red flowering variety. So, so far so good. I'm expecting decent crops off of these. I'm making sure they're getting plenty of water, and I put an organic granular feed in the ground when I set them. So yes, yeah, should, they should do well. Now, black fly has been a problem, and there are still a few little episodes of it, as you can see there, but uh, I've actually found a non-chemical spray which seems to work. So if I continue getting good results with this, I'll be sharing with you what that is, but I want to make sure that it's good before I let you know about it. So. My tomatoes this year, I've not given them the TLC that uh, they do certainly deserve. So maybe this weekend I'm going to, there you go, look, I've got some fruit formed on there. Maybe I'm going to rectify that by tying them up and pinching out the shoots, etc. But we'll see how that goes. Okay, so starting to get some crops of courgettes now. Now these are variety zucchini. Now I understand in the US courgettes are genu generally referred to as zucchini, while over here zucchini is a particular variety. So there we go, nice surf vegetables starting to form on there, so I'm very, very happy about it. Now this spray that I was talking about regarding the black fly, allegedly it's effective against powdery mildew on kirkabits such as uh, courgettes, marrows, pumpkins and squashes. So I'm thinking of spraying the leaves if they become affected with this and then if they're if it's effective on that then uh, <coughs> excuse me it could be a good one for you peeps to get into but we'll just see how this uh, this trial goes okay so I've got more runner beans here now this one here was absolutely covered in black fly yesterday now there's a little bit left but I gave it a good dose of this spray and certainly far far less there's probably only 25% of what there was, so that's that's very, very promising, I think, in these regards. So, got some nice flowers on there, and I'm truly hoping for some good crops of runner beans this year. Right, a bit of Dan-style relaxed gardening going on down here, but uh, these are dwarf beans, variety, or French beans, depending on what you want to refer to them as, variety tender greens. So there we go, once again, a bit of black fly, We've got some crop on there, so I might uh, I might pick some of those. So yeah, nice uh, crops coming off of them now. Once again, you know, I really should have tied these up. So yeah, one thing I like to sort of get over in my videos is, you know, gardening doesn't only have to be for those who, you know, have got loads of time they can dedicate to it. You know, my approach is generally, generally, <laughs> quite relaxed but a lot of that is out of necessity because if I agonized about doing everything perfect and tying everything up etc it'd be quite difficult for me because I simply cannot budget that amount of time to it at this stage but uh, that might change so you know if you can't do things perfect don't let it stop you right so there we go so that's the dwarf beans so I'm very happy with the results of those so far now down here I have some more courgettes these are variety zucchini as well getting some nice crops off of there. These plants are really, really putting out some good size now. More tomatoes here, and more tender green dwarf beans. Probably going to go around tomorrow and have a good picking session of those. Now it's looking like it's going to be a very promising year for blueberries. Now you can see here, look, that uh, got some really lovely blueberries coming on. I'm going to be doing a separate video covering my blueberry project because I've got quite a lot of varieties. I'm just going to mention some. Duke, uh, Duke, Spartan, Gold Traub, and Elliot, and Jersey. So five varieties. And I've got three other plants which may indeed be 
another variety. So I'm looking, or other varieties. So I'm looking at getting more blueberries when the time comes. But uh, many of you are aware, I've got about, uh, well, quite a few plants here. Let's just uh, say that. So I go into the polytunnel in here, and uh, things really are moving. Got some chilies going on here. So when these potatoes are ready for harvest, I'm probably going to harvest them all in one go, and then proceed to store them in either paper or hessian sacks. So I'm expecting very heavy crops. I've been giving them plenty of water, so they should indeed do well. So the melons down the end, I've, just, I've taken the decision not to hand pollinate and just to leave them. And the reasons for this are I'm not going to be budgeting too much time towards something that is not the easiest thing to get to produce a good crop here in the UK. So that's a decision I've made and uh, we'll just see what happens. So there's loads more cherries. You saw uh, my cherry picking video yesterday and there's just loads more to come so that's a great thing. More blueberries ripening here. Absolutely massive crops of blueberries this year. They're getting a lot of TLC. I give them an ericaceous drench, acidic. They require acidic growing medium, pH four and a half to five and a half. So they're in ericaceous compost, acidic drench every two weeks and a balanced fertilizer feed every two weeks. So that's sort of offset with the ericaceous feed. So they're very much getting water. I'm giving them a good watering every other, every other day. Ideally, I should be watering the blueberries every day, but uh, simply put, uh, you know, the watering around here takes about three quarters of an hour to an hour because uh, many of you are aware that uh, I water with a watering can, not a hose, and I depleted my water butts quite a while ago. There's a little bit left, but I'm keeping that for a non-rainy day, quite literally, so there we go. But i uh, going to be putting in sort of systems for collecting more and more water because I think that... Uh, here in the southeast, it's going to be quite an issue. Okay, so uh, don't know how much, how well you can see in here because it's dusk. Noticing the nights are drawing in now, but uh, that's what we would expect. So, ah, that's ready. That peach is ready. See, as I stated in the video yesterday, what quite often happens with peaches is you don't think they're gonna do much, and then they suddenly come all in one go. I'm trying to pick that with one hand, it's not easy. Yep, very good. There we go, so it's gonna be a peach or so a day for a while. finishing off this peach so gonna be loads to come on this channel all being well I've got some new deliveries coming so I'm very happy about that so hopefully all sorts coming I'm going to be expanding on the cherry collection I've decided probably going to keep the cherries in here when I get the new ones vertical cordons okay if you like my work, please feel free to like, share and subscribe. Check me out on Dan underscore Home Gardens on Instagram. See you next time.